the, the place where what they would love to do, the world needs it done, and it's like, wow, they can live happily ever after right now. Now, tell us, you have some personal stories, and you're not exactly Pollyannish about this thing. You've had your own, uh, you've experienced the vicissitudes of life yourself, correct? I've made so many mistakes and stumbled on so many broken paths. Like, I want to help other people maybe kind of prevent a little bit of those dead ends. You know, I started off uh, on this broken road years ago when um, I dropped out of college at 21 when I was pregnant. I wasn't married. And I felt like my life just came to a crashing halt. And it did, but it gave me a new opening. And I think sometimes when we're in the midst of a crisis, maybe you got fire, downsized, you know, you, somebody, your spouse left you, whatever. It seems like the end, when really it's a beginning. You just mm. can't see the beginning yet. Well, you ever hear that, that uh, I guess it's a, 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 a saying about the, what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the butterfly calls its birth or something along those lines? Yeah, that, that's right, the right. Idea. That's the idea you're talking about. And we, when we're going through trauma, we're going through disaster, wh- whether it's physical things like cancer or more psychological things like losing a job, it seems like the end of the world, right? But it's hard. How do you get from that position of seeing your disaster as the end of the world into seeing it as a birth? Can you do it while it's happening? Or should you do it while it's happening? You know, I think... It's a gift if you can see it while it's happening, but I never could. In the rearview mirror, it's all clear. But when mm-hmm. you're right in the middle of it, it just looks messy. But there's a miracle tucked in the mess. And That's you just awesome. have to wait it out. It's like that story about the kid who, who gets a, he's digging through the coal he gets for Christmas. And he, you ever hear that story? He gets a bag of coal for Christmas. He's looking through it and looking mm-hmm. through it and looking, looking through it. No, he, he gets a bag of manure for Christmas. He's looking through it and looking through it and looking through it. And he says, I know there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. And, and there's a pony in all the mess that we right. create or life gives us. But sometimes we just can't see it. And my first chapter in the book is called, When You Don't Get What You Want, You Get Something Better Experience. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. So all those jobs that I didn't like, you know, we've all had a job where we say it's a dead-end job. Well, it right. isn't. It's training for whatever life is going to have you do later. Now, that's, how, does, how do you go from a nice saying into actually experiencing that or putting it into practice? I think what you do is while you're in the midst of a job you don't like, you, you frame it and say, okay, I don't love this. But what is it going to teach me? What, what, and once you learn what you need to learn, something else will open up. So anytime life throws me a difficulty, you know, I go into myself petty mode for a few minutes, and then I say, wait a minute, Regina, what are you supposed to learn here? What does God want you to learn so that you can be a better person for whatever happens next? And once I look at it as a learning experience, then I go, bring it on, man. I want to learn this lesson, so I don't have to repeat it. Do you actually say that, bring it on, when things are really... I do. I, yeah? It's funny how I pray now. I'll say, okay, you know, I used to say, God, take away whatever this mess is. And now I realize, when I, when I got pregnant at 21, I tried to pray her away, because it, it felt like a mess. I thought, oh, please, God, don't, don't let me be pregnant, like it was God's uh-huh. fault. You know, we always blame right. God for a mess. <laughs> but I look back, and what the greatest gift of my life was that daughter, who's now 36. Oh, my And gosh, I'm so glad great. that yeah. it happened the way it did because I didn't have any other children. And it was a gift. I just couldn't see it at the time. So now when I pray, I say, you know, God, I don't understand what's going on here, but I always know you've got the best for me. So bring it on, whatever this is. And and if I've missed the the lesson here, use a billboard or a sledgehammer. That's what I always (laughs) say. Use a billboard or a sledgehammer because I missed it. I, I love what you said. You said you kind of s- said this uh, just in passing, but I think it's really important. You said, I don't understand. And that really is important to me because we think we're supposed to understand everything, or even worse, we think we do understand everything. When in reality, our, our brains are dummies, right? Our brains can't see ahead of what's ahead or what's around the curve or around the bend when we're going through some disaster. But for some reason, we don't get that. We think that we know everything that's going on. And we think we need to know the whole vision before before we can take one step. And I always want the blueprint. Like, God, if you just showed me the blueprint, I'd say yes. We don't get the blueprint. Yeah. Sometimes we get the clarity for one step. And in my book, God Never Blinks, I say, when in doubt, just take the next right step. That's because great. we always know one step we can make. But what yeah. we do is we whine about the 25 down the road, and then we, right. start, we don't even take that first step we could take. Right. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right. The first bite, yeah. right? And if you did that one step, you know, when I dropped out of school, I dropped out of college when I was pregnant, when my daughter was six years old and started kindergarten, first grade, I decided to go back to college. And I thought, wow, how am I going to do this? I'm, 
you know, 25 now and I've got a child to raise. And it was still one step at a time. So instead of saying, how am I going to finish a huge college degree and how much will it cost? I said, the next right step is to get the catalog for the college. To right. look at the class. That's right. the step. Now, you can, you can look online now at the, at the courses. You don't, you don't have to pay for them yet. And then you take one. You don't have to pay for four years worth. You pay for one. If you break it into really doable parts, I call it you know, bite-sized pieces, you can, you can do it. Yeah, and that's your books are kind of like that too. It's like you didn't. It's not like you had to write an entire tomb. It's like you have a bunch of lessons, like little individual lessons, right? It's not like you wrote an entire volume of, uh, you know, eight hundred page volume of stuff. It's just individual lessons. I'll bet each, each one of these lessons probably didn't even take a lot a long time to put together, did they? And you know what's great for me with writing the lessons? One, they're small. You can read it on your lunch hour. You can read it before right. you go to work. They're, they're bite size. And you can kind of get in, get out, try it out. I look at them kind of like tools. My dad was a sheet metal worker. He worked on roofs in the summer and did, you know, gutters and spouting, and then he did furnace in the winter. And he had so many tools. You know, we, we mm. were in the original Home Depot in his garage, you know, tools <laughs> everywhere. And these lessons are kind of like tools. Each lesson's a tool, like a hand. Each one work. Uh, hang, hold on to that thought, uh, Regina. We've got to take a break, okay? And I also want to talk to you about detours before uh, before you go. So we're talking to Regina Brett about God is always hiring 50 lessons for finding fulfilling work. You can find it on Amazon. I'm Farm Spen. You're listening to The Bright Side. A national crisis is here, and most people are not ready. If you could not leave home, how well would you fare? We've been told for years to have a supply of food stored, but the reasons may be different than you think. Infectious disease, domestic terrorism, and government regulations can and will prevent you from going to the store. If you've ever considered getting a supply of food, now is the time. Call Go Foods at 1-800-648-9753 or on the web at www.storefoodnow.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curve appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. Stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone. At 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855-955-7866. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows. Pause and rewind live TV. Even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. If you constantly feel run down and tired, your pH level might be low and your body could be full of toxins. If what you drink is not at a pH level of 8 or higher, you are inviting bacteria and acid to thrive in your body. But there is something you can do. Simply add 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops to your water to help your body rid itself of acidic waste, increase oxygen, and raise your pH balance to optimum levels. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals in the world. Alkalizing the water you 
you drink, ridding your body of acidic waste and toxins, and helping you regain energy and vibrant health. And studies show viruses, bacteria, and toxins cannot survive in an alkaline, high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Not just an alternative to the mainstream media. We're the premier independent talk radio network. We are GCN. On the bright side, I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're talking to Regina Brett about her new book, God is Always Hiring. 50 Lessons for Finding Fulfilling Work. So much of our lives, so much of our day, a third of our day is spent at work. So it makes sense that if you want to be fulfilled, you got to find how to find out how to be fulfilled at work. And that's what uh, this book tells you in 50 Lessons. 50 Lessons. Each lesson is a tool, as you were saying before I went to break. Right, Regina? Yeah, you know, I think sometimes people think, well, this lesson didn't work. Well, there's 50. Try which one works. My dad always said, you can't use a hammer on everything. Sometimes you use a screwdriver, you know, sometimes I, a wrench. You have to find I the right th- one, right project. Uh, yeah. I think they all work, personally. Did you start, actually, <laughs> I read that you started writing when you were 50, and that's why you have 50 lessons. Is that right? Well, I started writing when I was a kid, and I hid it in diaries, and I finally became a journalist when I was 30 years old. I graduated from college at 30. It took me 12 years to get a four-year degree, so I tell people, never give up. <laughs> That's you know? great. But I, was I, uh, one, I, had to, I, I was going to say, I always, want, I always hear stories about people who have been married for a long time, and the wife or the husband invariably says, well, I didn't really like him at first, or I didn't really think I'd ever go out with him. At first. And one person just kept, pers- kept at it, and kept at it, and kept at it, and then they end up getting married, and they're together for a long period of time. So just because something is a no at first doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be a no, right? Just because there's resistance at first doesn't always mean there's, there's always going to be resistance. Sometimes you can't take no for an answer. It's just a temporary answer. You have to find a way to make it a yes. Yes, exactly. I love that. So uh, everything's done in 50 chunks or 50 tools, and that's how you write your books, and which is really neat because it makes it so accessible and so easy to understand. You have, uh, I read you have a degree in religious studies, like a master's degree, correct? I do. It came about because I, I always loved God and the mystery of God. And so I took one class at John Carroll University, and I loved it. So they took the next one and the next, and then I thought, why don't I just did it, get a degree? And again, I didn't calculate the whole cost of time and money and all that. I just took one class, one class, and then one day graduated. Did you actually have a thesis about God or about religion or religious studies? I did. Studies? I had to, had to write an 80-page thesis, and I compared uh, the writings of Vince Bingo to the Psalms, because the Psalms in the Bible are all about the ups and downs of life and the drama of life. And I've always been attracted to the Psalms because there's one for everything you go through. That is awesome. The ups and downs of life, which are just a natural part of life. That's just how it is. It really is. I think it... too many of us don't take the overview. We think the short term is the end. You're in the middle of the story. It's not over yet. That's great. And we always want to get to the end for some reason. We think it's about the end. It's about the process. It's about the journey of it. It's not like about the end of the I... song. It's about the music. You don't want to get to the you end of the... You want to enjoy it all. You want to enjoy it all. Yeah, and there is, there's probably, you know, I, in, I come from a physical perspective, and what I notice in terms of physical discomfort is if you can find it in a strange kind of way, there's a, there's a link to, there's a connection between pleasure and pain. Now, some people really take advantage of this, and there's kind of weird sort of BDSM kind of bondage and, and domination kinds of things, but even like a cramp or even a muscle pain or, or a burn, if you focus on the pain, there's kind of a connection there between pain and pleasure. They're not so dissimilar in a way. Is that, does that make sense to you? Well, when I was going through cancer treatments, I had breast cancer in 1998. I had chemotherapy and radiation every day for six weeks. And anytime something hurt, I would just say, Regina, it's just pain. You're alive mm-hmm. and you can feel it. And it was a get-to, because I'm still here. And so pain is sometimes my body reminding me I have a body to take care of. How much of what we consider pain and we consider to be misery or we consider to be problem is labeling? Is actually how we're naming it. 
Well, my friend Roe used to say, it's just life. It's not impossible. It's just life. And it's going to be bumpy. And you wouldn't want it any other way. You know, the movie Parenthood, uh, at the end of it, the woman talks about some people choose the merry-go-round. They go around and around. She goes, I want the roller coaster. And I think we all really want the roller coaster. We say we don't, but yeah. you don't want to be on the merry-go-round and have everything predictable all the time. Yeah, actually, there's biochemistry in place when we're scared or when, when something, something seems unpleasant. There's biochemistry in place. It's not all that 